Okay, now here's an exercise to remember and do regularly over the next few days. Relax, breathe, all of this will pass. Yes, we finally endured our way through the endless months of the US presidential election to the, well, shall we say, the beginning of the end. And it's been a pretty dumb election, all things told. But because it's remained almost immovably on a knife's edge right to the last, the final few days have seen a sharp uptick in stupidity as the campaigns screech more and more loudly and, to be fair, weirdly at each other. Let's ignore the noise, take another deep breath, and remind ourselves what would be happening in a normal political campaign at this point. Because at this stage, it's generally in the transition from the bombastic campaigning to the logistics. The last few days of the contest zero back in on the key policy messages to remind people what are the actual promises being made for the proposed administrations. The candidates particularly would be acting at their most energetic, but also their most presidential, to try to get people seeing beyond the sale, to see them in the job and to feel confident about how that would be. And while that's going on, the party machinery will be doing the -the on-the-ground logistical stuff that can really be the difference between winning and losing, mobilising all the volunteers to get the vote out, canvassing all the people, do they need a lift to the polls, all of that stuff. Those latter things are, of course, happening, at least across the various swing states, where the population has been truly battered into submission by the sheer quantity of political advertising that has been shoved in their faces over the last few months. But the actual political campaigns have apparently been getting more and more desperate, and it shows. So, for example, the Harris campaign, having had the insight, after the withdrawal of Joe Biden, that the Trump is a fascist line wasn't landing for them, and seeming to move on from that towards pitches that did seem to be more effective, they defaulted back to it at the last, and along with the mainstream media, just completely lost their minds about it. Nothing illustrated this better than the total nonsense that was peddled in relation to Trump's final rally in Madison Square Garden. Suddenly, there were so many stories talking about how Trump's rally was intentionally echoing one that happened there back in 1939, an actual rally for Nazi sympathisers that had George Washington's portrait flanked by swastikas. Hillary Clinton drew the comparison in an interview with CNN. Tim Waltz picked up on the theme at a rally in Nevada. He said this, There's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. And don't think that he doesn't know for one second exactly what they're doing there. Let's be clear, entirely factual critiques of Trump highlighting his instinctive authoritarian tendencies are entirely possible, but as the language became more and more explicit, as Nazism and fascism were directly invoked, it just became a resurgence of the worst indulgences of commentary during the first Trump term. First, does it matter that the 1989 rally was actually in a different venue, that only the name is the same? Of course it doesn't. Does it matter that also at this venue you had Marilyn Monroe famously singing Happy Birthday to John F. Kennedy? Of course not. Then you had the Democratic National Convention held there in 1976 and 1980, and even with Bill Clinton accepting his nomination in 1992. Were those tributes to the former Nazi rally? Of course not. Any valid concerns you might have about the implications of a Trump second term get devalued by that sort of nonsense. But that has been the tempo and the tone of the last few days. Kamala Harris said that yes, she believes that Trump is a fascist. And just when those messages failed to land when they were coming from Joe Biden, all the indications are that yeah, they're failing to land right now. 
So what do they think they're doing? Rather than being presidential and getting people to see Kamala Harris as the person who will act on the world stage on behalf of the American people, it has all once again become about Trump. And indeed, arguably in those hated last few days, Joe Biden stepped in to do his best to actively sabotage the campaign of his successor by using phrasing that could be interpreted as calling all of Trump's potential voters and supporters garbage. This followed the heavily publicised and attacked joke made by an edgy comedian at the Madison Square rally about Puerto Rico. As a non-partisan in this drama, I would probably conclude that that wasn't his intent. Biden probably was simply saying that the sort of people who made those comments about Puerto Ricans and others were actually garbage, not the wider electorate who might vote for Trump. The Democrats do understand, most of them anyway, that Hillary Clinton's baskies of deplorables comment in 2016 was a massive error of judgment. But any high-level politician should have care in how they use language to avoid that sort of ambiguity, particularly because the Republicans were always going to jump on it and say that that's exactly what he meant. The fact Biden blundered into saying something that could be so easily used in that way, it certainly supports the logic as to why he's not the candidate anymore. But in any case, this has all been the tenor and the tempo. Instead of closing arguments structured around well-planned campaign messaging, there has been a lot of people pointing fingers at each other and shouting, How dare you! Democrats may be unsettled by the fact that outside of that, the Trump campaign has actually had some effective moments in the last couple of weeks. The photo opportunity of Trump serving burgers at McDonald's played very well for him. It's very visual, got covered widely by the press as a result, made him appear pretty relatable. And also, if the campaign was going to do a how dare you back to Joe Biden about his comment on people being garbage, the sight of Trump driving a branded garbage truck was a highly effective, visual and witty way to do so. That sort of humour is actually a very effective rebuttal by the campaign against the accusations of being Nazis. One side is saying, your campaign is jackboots at Madison Square Rally, but then people turn to look, and instead they see you delivering burgers and fries. Not a look that Hitler ever went for. Nevertheless, the incompetence of the Harris campaign shouldn't obscure the fact that this election is genuinely a dangerous moment because, and this is a thing, the Trump campaign has chosen to play with promoting suspicion about the integrity of the election process. Trump's position, as it was in 2016, as it was in 2020, is that the only way he could ever conceivably lose an election is if the other side cheated. It is a profoundly anti-democratic sentiment. Yes, Two things can be true at once. Trump is not ideologically consistent enough or practically organised enough to be anything close to a Nazi or a fascist. But the act of attacking the mechanisms of democracy serves the interests only of America's authoritarian enemies, China and Russia particularly, whose line is that their flavour of authoritarianism is superior to the West democracy. And that activity is one that means that while the Democrats and the mainstream media have lost their minds on the substance of the message, the root of the concerns are valid. And that's a choice. You can be Trump and stand for everything that Trump stands for and not attack the mechanisms of democracy. You can support Trump and what he stands for and not accept the ego and the hubris of any politician who says, I could never lose. Every politician should be reminded often that the votes they get in an election are not theirs as of right, they are given by the electorate, but deserves better than to be taken for granted. That applies to Democrats, by the way, who seem to have this weird belief that they deserve the votes of black people and women and every disadvantaged minority as of right. 
if you don't vote for me, you ain't black, said Joe Biden in a bizarre discussion in 2020. But at the same time, Trump seems to believe that a majority of the vote overall is his as of right, so obviously only fraud could explain it if he fails. No, you have to win votes. We get to choose, and the more people presume that they can take your vote for granted, the more inclined you should be to show them the consequences of doing so. Now, the election is about to happen. By all accounts, it is going to be very close. Some of Trump's advocates, such as Elon Musk, may point at the betting market, which have been strongly pro-Trump recently, and suggest that that means that all the signs are so strong for Trump, but again, if he doesn't come through for him, it can only be because of fraud. Don't fall for it. Some people with money have decided to bet a certain way. We don't know why. For all we know, it could mostly be Elon Musk himself buying an indicator of momentum in an attempt to sway the result. You don't know. Betting markets are not opinion polls. Opinion polls are themselves not perfect, but the whole way through they have been showing wafer-thin margins, meaning that right up to the end it could go either way. People telling you otherwise are setting the scene for disputing the results if it turns out that they lose. Expect that and don't fall for it. How much should we worry about all the reports of Trump supporters taking up positions within the election machine with an intention to reject certifying results if they go the wrong way? It is a genuine concern. It's one thing to want to be close to the mechanism, to ensure and to reassure yourself, but it's genuinely fair and properly run. It'd be quite another if using the definition of fair means only if your favoured candidate wins. So this is a test. Can the system stand scrutiny? Surely. Can it stand attempted subversion? Probably. It may take time, it may get messy. And that brings us back to where we started. Relax. Breathe. It's all getting very angry, very loud. You don't have to. The safest prediction of the election is that on the day of voting and in the days and weeks thereafter, there will be lots of conspiracy theories and completely fake videos purporting to show skullduggery that turn out to be totally different to what they purport to be showing. These will be circulating social media like a horde of angry wasps. It has become a habit for some people to do that. For every single major event that ever takes place and it has become a habit for other people to swallow those things and spread them. It's a habit you would be healthier breaking if you can bring yourself to it. Building some sceptical muscle, questioning the veracity of extraordinary claims and waiting to see the truth before believing and spreading them. No better time to start building those healthy habits than now, I would suggest. In any case, happy voting, America. Try to show the world how your system is strong enough to survive being under a bit of pressure rather than the opposite. And see if you can actually have established the result before next Friday. Because counting ballots really isn't as hard as some of your states seem to make it.